So you know how to draw graphics, play music, and get player input, but what's a good way to put it all together? We want to minimize repetitiveness so that we don't have duplicate code in various places. We should keep it object-oriented, and we want to make the code clean enough to be able to read and understand. The program structure should be based on objects rather than their functionality. With object-oriented code, you're modeling abstractions, such as enemies, bullets, and the system, as classes. I'm going to talk about a lot of basic bits that you're going to need for your game, but I'm only going to cover how to code very specific things. For the structure of your program, I will give you sort of a high-level view of what your structure might look like, and help you get an idea of where to start, but by all means you do not have to structure it the way I say. It's your decision how to structure your program in a way that seems logical to you. Here's a sample diagram of the structure I used for Unicorn Princess. On the left side, I have my manager classes. The image and sound managers, for example, hold all of the image and sound files in the game, and act as intermediates between the game loop and the images. The character manager makes sure that all the characters update every cycle, as well as is responsible for creating and deleting characters. The level manager is responsible for loading in map files and creating map objects. The next column of classes are more obvious elements of a game. The sound, images, and different types of entities like the player and enemies. As you can see, I have the enemy, player, and item classes inheriting from the character class. The character and bullet classes both inherit from base object. You can structure these however you see fit. I only have item inheriting from my character class because item, player, and enemy have many similar variables and functions. The input and timer classes are pretty much standalone objects and are only accessed by main. Input accesses the GameSys and the Character Manager class, as it will tell the GameSys to toggle full screen on one key press, and it will tell the Character Manager to move the player right or shoot on another type of key press. Give some thought into how you would like to structure your game. It doesn't have to be anything like mine. You might not have items inheriting from the character class, and you might have a vastly different structure. You don't even need to use manager classes, as you can give objects such as images and enemies static members so that they can manage themselves. So how should you figure out what objects to use in your game's structure? Get a piece of paper or open a Word document and write them down while I step through these. Your game itself is an object. You might create a game object to handle things like initializing the library and telling all the other objects to initialize and get ready to start the game. It might also handle the game's state and window attributes. You'll also need classes like an input class and a timer class. The input class will check to see if a user is hitting a key each cycle and decide what other classes need to handle the action. The timer class will regulate the game's frame rate so that it doesn't run really fast on new computers and really slow on old ones. The more obvious classes in your game will be things like the player, enemies, bullets, and power-ups. You will also need to consider what functionality and attributes all of these objects might have in common to figure out what their parent objects should be. All of these objects will have coordinates and dimensions, so that may be something they will all inherit. Player and enemies will move around, shoot bullets, and have looping animations, and bullets and power-ups are inanimate objects that are relatively simple. For these objects, you will not be storing their sprite images inside of these classes. The images themselves will go into the image manager, and you will have something like an image pointer or even just an integer ID to tell the class what image it has. Otherwise, if you were to store the images inside of the object classes, you would end up reloading the same image over and over for each enemy or bullet that is the same. You might have managers for your objects that I just mentioned, as well as images, sounds, and levels. They handle making sure everything gets updated and drawn every cycle, as well as initializing the entities or other actions such as loading in map files and reading them to create new level objects. You might want a level class for many of your games. Usually it will store an array of tiles or level elements and handle drawing them and updating parts in the level. For this tutorial, I am not going to show you how to make tiled maps, but I might in a future one. I am going to start out with creating level files that consist of listing out enemies, their types, and a starting position in the level. Because of this, I might have a level manager to handle loading in these files, but I did not write a level class for this game. The level manager for Unicorn Princess directly interfaces with the character manager to instruct it to create the new enemy objects with the data loaded from the map file. That's it for the overview of code design for the most part. 
Keep the objects I mentioned in mind while designing your own program structure. This guide is meant to push you in the right direction on how to structure your code, and not just to hand out code that you will blindly follow and therefore not completely understand. This guide is meant to, well, guide you into programming a game, but not specifically tell you how to do it. The way you structure it is largely up to you. Just because I structured Unicorn Princess the way I did does not mean it's the best way to do so, but it's better than cramming all of your code in main. Even if you're not sure how to start with structuring your program at first, start with something. Build up a little bit at a time. Start with your game class to initialize your library, then the input and timer classes, and then maybe add the player class. Get some player functionality written, write some of the enemy class, and write some of the bullet class. Go back and update your object functionality more as you get further in the project. You can always go and refactor parts of your program later once things become more clear. Also, remember that you are always welcome to get help, advice, and constructive criticism at my message board. Next video, I'll be going into more specific concepts like collision detection and map loading, including theory and how to code them.